Hey guys, welcome to the film room. In this video, we are about to break down plays that you can run against 2-3 zones. So a 2-3 zone is going to have two men up top that are guarding these areas, and the bottom three guys are going to guard across the bottom. So we're going to run plays that will expose the weaknesses in this zone. And one of the first things that I want to do is talk about the difference between a 2-3 zone and a 1-3-1. In this zone, they're typically going to put a long athletic man across the top that's going to force the ball back and forth. They'll put three people across the midline, and then they're going to have one defender, usually a smaller guy, underneath that has to cover the entire baseline. Now I'll explain why I'm even talking about a 1-3-1 when this video is about 2-3 in just a little bit. But let's start by looking at some actions that work. This play is commonly referred to as stack, and the goal of this play is to run somebody baseline that's going to occupy this corner wing and then there's going to be a cross screen that is set on the middle five and if you slip in your other big man right in between those two you're going to give yourself a layup now the reason that most coaches refer to this action as stack is because the most common alignment is by stacking your two bigs right next to each other on the block. The strategy is to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup here, your baseline runner is going to pull the wing out, and then when you set that in screen with your postman, you're going to have that sweet spot right there to throw it. Kansas does a great job of taking away the big and then rotating out to the corner. Now this concept works even if you don't start in that same alignment. Here, the offense starts with a ball screen to make sure that when it gets reversed, that the top defender has to go and pick up the ball. Then what they're gonna do is they're gonna set that same end screen. You have the corner man that's taking care of the wing and there's that exact same slip to the basket. Now, most people love running the alley-oop against the two, three zone. So I'm gonna show you how most people set it up. The first thing that you're gonna do is swing the ball to the man who's gonna receive the alley-oop and then you're gonna reverse it twice. Once the ball gets reversed, this opposite wing is going to flash to the middle, pulling up the five man, and then you're gonna have the last man go and set this back screen on the wing, and all you need is an on time and on target pass. And there is an easier way to set this up. Get the ball on the side of the alley-oop man, and when you reverse it, all three of these defenders should be matched up. Then your big who's in the room is just going to wedge the middle five men up the lane and the guy in the corner takes off for the lob. Now here are two ways to utilize a flare screen. When you reverse the ball, you want it to get caught right in between the gap of the top and the bottom defender so that the top defender rotates over, the bottom defender rotates down to the corner. Then have one of your bigs come over and set a flare screen and reverse the ball right back from where it started and you should have an open rhythm three. Now this seems super simple, but it really does get you open shots. And the way that you can counter it is come and set that exact same flare screen again. And what's gonna happen is the top man's gonna worry about getting hit on that flare. You slip right to the high post, and then you can either score it or go high-low. Now we'll move on to an overload concept. This is where you're gonna get four players on the same side of the court. And you do this because it creates matchup issues. This man's on the ball. You'll see the bottom wing is gonna take the corner, but these back three defenders have a hard time knowing who to guard. You could probably throw it to the low man right now. But what happens is they flash the high post and then the defense gets in rotation and they never recover. The key to overloading a side is you have to let the defense show you what to do. Here, Indiana State overloads this top side and this bottom defender decides to run over with him. They are probably trying to play the play. The guard wisely slides over to the wing and this top defender is so concerned about the high post touch that he covers up there and you get a wide open kick for a three and it all works because of the overload. Now we're gonna get into what I think is the best part of this video and that's setting ball screens against the zone. And the person that you wanna screen the most often is one of these top wings. So here there's a ball screen and as they drive downhill, once you can engage this other top defender, if your spacing is correct, you're going to get an open look. It's obvious the ball should get swung to the corner for an open three. This guy makes a bad decision, but you can see how open it was. Using this simple concept of setting a ball screen on the top and sliding can get you open looks. Here's the ball screen. We need to slide to the wing to get separation from the other top defender. We need to slide to the corner to get good spacing, come off, and knock down a jumper. And what I've found about setting top ball screens is that you can almost treat it like a man-to-man. -man. As he comes off and kicks it, with this closeout, you can see that everybody on the court is essentially matched up, and if you drive a closeout, it's just like playing against man-to-man. -man. You drive a gap, you force help, and then you make your decision just like you would against man defense.
At the beginning of the video, I talked about a 1-3-1 zone. The reason why is because coaches have started disguising a 1-3-1 into the beginning of the possession to make you think it's not a 2-3. You can see this looks like a 1-3-1 zone, but as soon as it gets swung around, the defense shifts back into a 2-3. So here's a great wrinkle that looks similar to the last play that we just showed you. You set the ball screen and you attack this top guy. But in this concept, take your corner man, flash him to the high post to pull the five man up and then have your big fella seal the wing. Once the ball gets to the high post, they can't guard both. They either have to guard the big or they have to guard the wing. Now this is probably one of the best actions in this video. It's a ball screen with an overload. I want you to notice how both of these wings end up filling to this side. They're gonna set the middle ball screen and as they attack, he's gonna throw the ball back and because of the rotation from the wing up, there's nobody left for the man in the corner to have to sprint out there. Another way to force this same rotation is by running a pick and pop. As soon as the screener pops to the wing, it forces that bottom guy to come help up and there's nobody left in the corner, so he drives the bad closeout and ends up dishing it to the room. And the other way to set a ball screen against a zone is by setting a step up. And that just simply means setting a screen on the outside of one of the top defenders, sending the ball handler towards the sideline. As soon as he comes off the screen, it entices that five man to step up and help. You already have the bottom wing stuck in the corner, and now you have two defenders left to guard three, and you can really read it like you would a man to man. And what coaches have done with this step up concept is running something called short action. As the guard gets downhill, you're gonna have this corner man slip to the same side room. And as the five man steps up, you attack downhill and slip it right to him. And a lot of times the defense doesn't even see him. And the counter to this play looks exactly the same. As the ball handler comes off of the step up and the short action is going over, it gets these two defenders to stare at that side. You swing it right back for a catch and shoot three. And this concept by UConn is genius. You run the same step up, but as you do it, you're gonna clear out to the corner and slide corner here, and then you're gonna shallow cut a shake action right behind this step up, and it overloads the defense. They get caught up and don't know who to guard. Get some of these concepts in your playbook so that when somebody goes 2-3, you're prepared. And hit that subscribe button so you get all of our new content. And then make sure you watch this video right here where we break down how you score against 2-3 zones without running plays. Thanks for coming through. We'll see you next time in the film room.